Okay, let's start. Um, uh, today my topic is uh, Kubo Edge and Kubernetes help manage all the monitoring devices on the world's longest RC bridge. Okay, uh, first let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Wei Huan. I'm from a Chinese company called Harmony Cloud. I'm the chief architect and I'm responsible for uh, for edge computing. I contribute to projects like uh, KS and Kube Edge. And this is my email. If you have any questions about edge computing or you have any uh, scenarios about edge computing that you want to discuss with me, please write to me. Uh, okay, uh, today the, uh, the content of my speech uh, includes the uh, following, following aspects. Uh, the first, I will um, give a brief introduction about the Kube Edge, including my uh, investigation of the current mainstream cloud native edge computing frameworks and why we choose Kube Edge. And then I will focus on how we applied the Kube, the Kube Edge to the uh, Hong Kong Zhuhai Micro Bridge project including how to define the devices on the bridge, uh, how to associate each device with the CID in KS, and how to manage and operate the applications deployed on edge nodes. And finally, I will briefly share some of our best practices on edge computing. Uh, okay, uh, this is a uh, uh, a review of Kube Edge. Uh, Kube Edge is uh, the first CNCF incubating edge computing project. Uh, it starts from uh, November uh, 2018, and now it has more than uh, 900 boards and uh, almost 400 stars. Um, and, and also some key points from the perspective of the Kube Edge architecture. Uh, first, it's very compatible with the Kube API and uh, it's very stable um, because it has a very reliable message push from cloud to edge. And it, and it, it can be very lightweight. Uh, we, can, we can tailor the, the HD and also HD is, is uh, tailored from uh, Kubernetes and, uh, and it can support um, some very wide area node access and uh, support very large scale device access and uh, and uh, finally it has the uh, uh, the edge autonomy and uh, uh, also I investigated some cognitive open source um, edge computing frameworks like uh, K3S, Coinyard, and Super Edge and uh, all of these this, uh, frameworks are uh, Mm, uh, become popular, yeah, in in China, in China. But um, why we choose the uh, Kube Edge? Uh, and from my point of view, and I think we have the uh, some reasons. Uh, first, uh, from my point of view, K3S is a solution to manage edge nodes at local, um, and the K3S does not provide a solution. Uh, like wide area node access, and uh, uh, both Open Yards and the Super Edge do not provide the lightweight solution for node access and the device management. And uh, uh, both Open Yards and Super Edge um, uh, may have the stability risk in the case of Cloud Edge network fluctuations. Um, we know we all know that um, it's uh, caused by the real risk problem of informer. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, so what's this fast about the long, the world's longest cloud bridge, uh, with uh, a total length of the fifty five kilometers? The so Hong Kong Zhuhai Micro Bridge is the longest cloud bridge in the world, uh, and in order to uh, to monitor the safety of the bridge all times, there's a large uh, number of sensors uh, deployed on the bridge. And uh, each sensor will generate, will generate large amounts of data. All the data needed to be collected and processed in real time. And 
any abnormal information from on the bridge need to be alerted immediately. But there is, are some some problems we encountered is that um, large amount of monitoring equipment and uh, they have uh, the large very large number uh, large amount of data and uh, has very low value density that means and there are lots of invalid and duplicated data that we don't have and uh, the, the bridge is, is very long it has a long instance and uh, the very difficult construction construction and uh, also uh, if we want to position the 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 problem of the bridge we will need obviously we will need the 5g transmission and so uh, here's our, our solution we use the 5g communication um, plus Beidou position at plus edge computing and and uh, and uh, we use Cooper edge and in, so in this way uh, the all the data collected from the sensor you process will process locally at edge and any abnormal information uh, could be found through real time AI inference and um, this AI inference program also running at edge and all the app applications are managed at the cloud and uh, they all they can all be they can uh, be distributed by cloud and uh, support the dynamic operation and the maintenance at edge uh, so here you can see uh, we will um, have many edge box deployed alongside the bridge this edge box it also uh, means edge node in the group edge framework. And also we use, uh, we have the 5G antenna and uh, uh, many sensors. Like here is the sensor, um, is a shutter sensor. And here we can see uh, all, the, all the devices on the bridge. On the, on the left, it's the edge bars, it's, it's composed by uh, a core board and the base plate. And uh, on the right, uh, here you can see the many, many other sensors like uh, rain and snow sensor, microphone, and the environment aware integrated shutter, and also the MU. Totally, uh, we can uh, we can measure for 14 types of sens sensor data. And here is uh, uh, um, the picture of the shutter. This shutter can collect uh, light intensity, carbon, pressure, noise, temperature, humidity. Yeah. And um, also, um, but how to manage this shutter? Manage, manage this shutter. So in, in the Kubernetes, in the, in the Kubernetes edge, um, we can, um, we can, Define this device. Uh, we can define the this kind of uh, shutter device uh, called device model, and we can define each device instance uh, use this model. Here is here is the 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 demo file of the device model. Here we can see we can define uh, many properties uh, regarding this this uh, device model. We can have the property name and the uh, property description, property type, and uh, the method of property collection. Yeah, currently here we can see we in read-only mode. And also here we can see there are different, we can define many different uh, device model properties. And also we can uh, have an YAML file to define the the device. Here we 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 define the the uh, shutter device instance. And here we can in the specification we can define the reference device model name and the uh, protocol and the uh, we use is is the mode bus 
and also the slave ID, the, the uh, and also um, the uh, like the serial port, bond rate, data bits, priority bits. These are these properties are all uh, special. They are all specific with the uh, the structure. Yeah. Here also we can see there's uh, uh, segments regarding the data. Here's the data means we set the data field for the third part data push. Uh, this means the data collected from this shutter can be uh, pushed to the cloud, um, but it also can be pushed to some third party data storage. Uh, just like uh, like InfraDB, and here also we can also see can see the the status. This uh, segment is used to define the data reported to the cloud. Yeah, this and also means the just string right just string. Here we define the um, many types of the trains like uh, yeah. Here you can see the the last. Yeah, the carbon, the pressure, and the humidity. Hmm. And uh, um, and uh, we can also um, deploy and manage uh, the the different applications to the edge from the cloud. And um, currently, um, yeah, uh, uh, basically speaking, um, um, the uh, tablets the types deployed to the edge can be uh, can be uh, summarized as three types. Uh, one is the business applications like uh, Nginx, Palm Cache, etc. And uh, uh, we and all the device member program that we, we that we we write to collect to the collect the data and uh, push the data to the cloud. They all um, they are deployed as container, and uh, as these con this containers um, are also deployed, are also deployed to the to the edge, and also there's uh, a type that a type of problem uh, like uh, the AI inference programs that in order to uh, do the inference work immediately at the edge. And this is um, a picture of the whole uh, whole uh, whole architecture yeah, from the cloud to the edge and to the sensors. Yeah, uh, we can see the, the clouds. The clouds we have the Kubernetes and the the uh, the, the, the cloud core. The cloud core is the, the key component of Kubernetes edge, and at the edge. You have the uh, the edge core. Edge core. Edge core is the key component. The key component of Kube Edge at edge. And also uh, here we can see how MQTT broker. And uh, here we also we have many components in order to do the uh, data collection, data collection, data processing, and uh, the data. Uh, Conversion, yeah, and uh, here the cloud is responsible for connecting to the bridge, um, health the bridge health monitoring system and managing the edge nodes and the edge applications, and the edge node is uh, responsible for, uh, for, for, uh. For connect various sensors of the bridge and uh, uh, push the other data to the cloud. And here you can see we have already connected many um, uh, many sensors at the edge. And also, um, and finally, we also um, I have also have some best practices. Um, uh, first, about the data collection frequency. Uh, the data collection frequency of the mapper, um, as I showed you before, 
will directly affect the CPU and the memory resources and that occupied by the mapper. Uh, and, and generally speaking, the system resource consumption is uh, proportional to the collection frequency of the mapper. And when the edge resources are limited, and the collection frequency should be uh, strictly controlled. And uh, generally speaking, there are two types to push data uh, that collect the uh, from mapper. Uh, first, uh, you push to cloud call. Uh, the, uh, as we all know, the SQL write installs in the edge of the um, group edge. You only store the latest piece of data from the current device. Um, the edge cloud uh, could, does not provide storage for uh, large amounts of data collection. And uh, uh, second, second uh, we can push the data to the database. And uh, that means and after the mapper creates the data, it does not uh, push it to the MQTT at local. Uh, but uh, can be directly pushed data to the third party database like InfraDB. And um, also, I have some best just um, uh, regarding the data reporting frequency. Uh, generally speaking, the data reporting frequency of mapper is also uh, proportional to the edge core resource usage. Uh, and so, if edge resource is limited, the data reporting frequency should also be controlled. And uh, about the edge cache, um, that means uh, when the cloud and edge node is uh, in a weak network or intermittently disconnected, uh, we hope the business data at edge node will not be lost. Uh, but the storage space of the edge node is often limited. And we hope that the edge catch could be designed as a lightweight solution. That means uh, once the network is good, the edge can directly push data to the cloud. Hmm. When the network between cloud and edge is disconnected, uh, then the edge node will catch the data. And when the network is restored again, the data will be synced to the cloud uh, using a, like a scheduled task. And about the AR model warm up at edge, that means, um, and this uh, I think is very useful in the studios like uh, with the edge AI. We need to update and um, add an AR model in seconds. Um, but sometimes the image size of the AI model may be very large. And the uh, network of edge nodes may be very poor. In this case, if we don't adopt um, any image warm-up function, then the AI inference work will likely to be interrupted during the image updates. Uh, this is what we don't want to want 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 it to have happen. I think, and also uh, we need uh, some massive edge node access. For example, if we have more than one hundred thousand nodes need to connect. In this scenario of the uh, massive node access, uh, we all know we can guess that. Mm, ETCD, API server, and the cloud call um, are likely to become the performance bottleneck. Uh, generally speaking, um, there are two ways to resolve the this problem. Uh, first, um, by simplifying the node status object and the port status object, the traffic uh, in patch on the call call caused by the large scale edge call. Uh, reporting information can be reduced. And a second, uh, use the dynamic, use some an operation like the dynamic back off operation. Uh, we can avoid the sim simultaneous access 
of a large number of atom nodes. Yeah, this is also very useful. And uh, finally, uh, in the case of my of the massive atom node access, uh, we also should uh, adopt some scheme like um, as long as the edge node is powered on and connected to the internet, then the cloud site should automatically discover the edge node and automatically install any edge components. Yeah, yeah I think uh, this is all my, my lessons learned and uh, best, best practices yeah, from the, um, for the Kubernetes. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you.